If you love playing Doctor and using your astrological expertise as a hashtag Pisces to have coitus with your patients, cure the plague with some fancy water, and deal with bleeding penises in the Elizabethan area, forsooth, you'll love Astrologaster, because who doesn't love stuff leaking out of there? Welcome to 5 Minute Game Reviews with your resident Neko business cat, Miss Lero Rose, where we sniff out if a game is worth your hard earned rose credits, or if you should pushing it off your to be playlist. Let's get down to business. It's London, 1592. The Black Plague has struck, and you, Dr. Simon Foreman, cure yourself with astrology. I don't even need to make a joke out of this. Fast forward, and your quote unquote medical practice is booming, with all the patients wanting you to answer the big questions in life, such as how can I avoid marrying my cousin Barbara? Who ate all the pies, or will my husband be arrested for treason? Simply consult the stars, and Libra will let you know if you have issues with involuntary urination, while Uranus says you are cursed by a witch. Then enjoy prescribing sugar as medicine for a full six hours of comedic craziness, all while avoiding prosecution for practicing medicine without a license. But you'll get one of those, won't you? So, how does it hold up on the Rose Enterprise's official rating scales? Is it good for the pause? 5 out of 5. It's a narrative game after all, so you're mostly just clicking. The only confusing part was in the beginning I felt you didn't have enough info to choose a diagnosis. Then I realized you're not really meant to. It's actually kind of difficult to pick the right answer sometimes, and therefore landing a letter of rec recommendation from each client is a fair challenge. Is the plot chonky or schlonky? A chunky 5 out of 5. I loved it. Humorously serious, made all the more amazing by the fact that all 13 clients and Dr. Simon are solidly based in real history. The language feels right without getting too confusing, and everyone's stories intertwined, giving all the right hints without being on the nose, and really gets you invested. Plus, your choices do actually change the way the story goes. Props to the dev for all the research and thought that went into this. My favourite story was Amelia getting her literature stolen by Shakespeare. Does it look pretty? Absolutely, another 5 out of 5 banger. Beautifully drawn 2D cardboard puppet-like characters that are surprisingly expressive and don't leave you wanting more going on the screen. Would your ears prick up? 5 out of 5, you can tell so much work went into this. I love when narrative games take the time for full voice acting. There's an entire cast that's really well done, plus a whole ass choir. Yes, I was surprised too, but the storybook atmosphere was enhanced by every client's visit getting their own little verse. Here, listen. It's pretty cool. Who's this man at the door who we've not seen before? Who is this man at the door who we've not seen before? Who is come to inquire dressed in such strange attire? Signor Ferraro. Overall, I'd rate this game on the meow scale. The only reason it's not a 10 out of 10 game is because the dialogue and singing did drag in some parts, and for some reason selecting stuff on the Switch, which I played it on, which was a bit weird. So if you're not super into narrative choice games, then why are you here? It's definitely not a game for everyone, but if you like what you've seen, this is definitely one to try. And finally, the million dollar question. Should you spend your rose credits on this? For sure. At 10 USD, it's a worth full price, but if you see it on sale, it's a bargain and you should grab it. All the linky links below. Alrighty ladies and gentle yarns, that about wraps up this 5 minute review. If you played the game before or want to try it out, leave a comment below. And make sure you subscribe for more reviews, me out or at least me your gameplay, to become part of the Rose Enterprises lore and more. Until next time!